Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry Podcast. Today we're talking about KSP problems. Here's what I'd like to accomplish in this webcast. I'd like to very briefly talk about the solution process when these slightly soluble salts dissolve in water. I'd like to teach you how to write equilibrium constant expressions for these slightly soluble salts. These are called KSP expressions. And we'll use ice tables to complete the practice problems. So when I talk about a slightly soluble salt, we're talking about the salts from your solubility rules that we said were insoluble or slightly soluble. They really only dissolve in water to a tiny, tiny degree. So a saturated solution is significantly less than 0.1 molar, usually quite a bit less than that. When salts dissolve in water, right? so if we had a picture model of an ionic solid and we're dissolving it in water, when the salts dissolve, the ions dissociate, they separate, they get salivated by the water molecules, right? So they're going to move away from each other. And we're really making the assumption with these problems that the ions are going to dissociate completely and there's no other equilibria going on. So we're going to try and keep it as simple as possible. So in order to do these problems successfully, you need to be able to start with a balanced equation. Normally, you've just given the identity of the solid, and that solid is going to be the reactant in your balanced equation. So if you have silver iodide, all right, when it dissociates, it's going to form silver ions and iodide ions in a one-to-one -one ratio. So you do really have to pay attention to your formula writing, but also that your balanced equation represents the relative uh, concentrations of the ions, uh, the stoichiometry of them, when you write that equation. For magnesium hydroxide, all right, I've got two hydroxides for each magnesium ion in the solid. So I have to write a two as the coefficient in front of the hydroxide. Right? So the ions are the products, the solid your reactant. That's going to be true for all of these. Once we have the balanced equation, we can start to talk about the equilibrium constants. We're calling them KSPs because it's the equilibrium for the solubility product. So it's called the solubility product expression. And really, it's just a type of KEQ. And it's got this special symbol because it's this particular situation with these slightly soluble salts dissolving to a very small extent. So when you go to write your KSP expression, remember you have to start from a balanced equation. We had done a balanced equation for the dissolving of silver iodide. So there it is again. And to write the KSP expression, it's just like writing any other KEQ. Products over reactants, coefficients become exponents. So KSP is the concentration of the silver ion times the concentration of the iodide ion. It's a solubility product. We're multiplying these together. Similar kind of thing we'll do for the magnesium hydroxide. We had the balanced equation. The other thing I want to just remind you or point out to you is that the denominator in the KSP expression is always going to be 1. What I do want to remind you of here is that since the coefficient for the magnesium uh, was 1, but the coefficient for the hydroxide is 2, we have to square the hydroxide ion concentration in the KSP expression. That's something that it's very easy to overlook. That's why I say always write that balanced equation first before writing your KSP expression. These KSP problems fall into two main categories. Either you're given a KSP value and you're asked to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of the ions in solution for a saturated solution. Or you're given those equilibrium concentrations. Maybe it refers to just the molar concentration or you know, the equilibrium concentration, or it might talk about a saturated solution. And from that information, you're going to calculate the KSP. Uh, sometimes the twist might be that it's not a molar concentration. Maybe it's something like grams per liter for your concentration. You have to do a little extra conversions. Uh, there are several different ways to word these problems, but really they all fall into these two categories, KSP to concentration or concentration to KSP. We're going to use the same basic strategy to solve these problems, though. Always start with a balanced equation, just like any equilibrium problem. Write out your KSP expression, just like any equilibrium problem. And I recommend that you use an ice table to figure out the relative concentrations of the species at equilibrium. It's really the best way. Uh, so you'll end up finding the change in terms of x and substitute that into your KSP expression and get whatever answer it is that you need for the type of problem that you're doing. 
So what I'd like to do is let's go on and do a couple of problems together. I'm going to walk you through them. I've got all the math worked out. Pause when you need to write down information. I've got lots of helpful tips for you so that you can be very successful at these problems because they show up in AP Chemistry a lot. They're really a core uh, set of skills. So let's look at this first problem. The solubility of copper 2 carbonate is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5th molar. That's implying that's your equilibrium concentration. Calculate the KSP of copper 2 carbonate. So, right, this falls into the, I've got the equilibrium concentration, I have to find the KSP kind of category. All right, so that's what we're trying to do is find the value of the equilibrium constant. So, we'll start with the balanced equation. Copper 2 carbonate, CuCO3 makes copper ions and carbonate ions, they're going to be in a one-to-one -one ratio because they're in a, their charges are both the same, so in the ionic solid they're in a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, states of matter are not required in these equations, but if you find them helpful, by all means include them. All right, the reactant's always going to be a solid and we're dissolving these in aqueous solutions. So now we can write the KSP expression, all right? Again, the denominator is 1. The coefficients of the two products are both 1. So it's really just the concentration of the copper ion times the concentration of the carbonate ion, which we, don't, uh, which we do know, actually. We were given them. Um, so we can go to set up our ice table. Um, the copper 2 carbonate is a solid, so really we can't talk about a concentration for the solid. It certainly wouldn't change. Um, the initial concentrations of both the copper two ions and the carbonate ions would be zero initially. All right, so we've got our table set up. We know that in order to establish equilibrium, we have to get some ions into solution. We have to shift right. So the copper ion concentration will increase by plus x, and the carbonate concentration will also increase by plus x. And then uh, since we know the solubility of this at uh, equilibrium in a saturated solution, we actually know x. We were given that in the original problem. And so we can say at equilibrium, the concentration of the copper 2 ions will be 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5th molar, and we'll have the same concentration for the carbonate ions. So we were given that information in the problem. Remember, they're in a one-to-one -one ratio, so they're going to have the same concentration of ions in solution. So now we can substitute these values into our equilibrium constant, our KSP expression and solve for the KSP expression. So basically we're going to square 1.5 times 10 to the minus fifth, and that will be our KSP value, 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10. Just as a reminder, when we report equilibrium constants, we treat them as if they're dimensionless. So we don't have to write down any units for the KSP. We just report it as a ratio. So let's go on and do another problem. What is the molarity of a saturated solution of silver chromate? The KSP is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12. Well, in this problem, I'm given a KSP. I need to find concentrations. So we're going in the other direction, and yet our approach is really going to be the same. So we'll start with a balanced equation, silver chromate. You have to remember, silver has a charge of plus 1. Chromate has a charge of minus 2. So the formula for silver chromate, the, the ionic solid, is Ag2CRO4. It's going to make two silver ions for every chromate ion in solution. So it's really important that you've written your ionic formulas correctly here, or you're just not ever going to quite reach the answer we expect. All right, the next thing we need to do, we need to write that KSP expression from our balanced equation. Remember, the silver has a coefficient of 2 here. We can't ignore that. So the coefficients become exponents, and we have to remember that when we go to write our KSP expression. We have to square the concentration of silver and then multiply it by the concentration of the chromate ion. And we know that that expression has a numerical value of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12th. We know that equilibrium constant. We were given that. Okay, so now we can set up our ice table. All right. Again, the silver chromate is a solid. It's not going to have any changes in concentration, so effectively we're going to ignore that. The silver ion concentration will initially be zero. The chromate ion concentration is initially zero. We have to shift right in order to reach equilibrium, but because coefficient, the coefficient of the silver ion is two, the silver ion concentration has to increase by 2x. 
but the chromate concentration increases by x, right? There are two silver ions for every chromate when one formula unit of silver chromate goes into solution. So we have to keep that in mind. And this is something that students sometimes struggle with. So we have to incorporate that into our ice table right now. So at equilibrium, the silver ion concentration would be 2x, and the chromate concentration would be x. We have to remember this because now we're ready to substitute these values into our KSP expression. All right, we knew that the KSP expression was the silver ion concentration squared times the chromate ion concentration, and we had a numerical value for that. So we can substitute in our equilibrium concentrations. We have to remember, square. we have to square 2x. What students often, often forget is that I have to square the entire term in inside those parentheses. So 2x parentheses squared equals 4x squared total. And then I have to multiply that by x for the chromate. So I end up really, in the end, 4x cubed equals 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12. And now we're ready to go ahead and solve for x. So really we have to divide both sides by 4 and then take the cube root of both sides very straightforward math, really, and then we solve for x, and we get a value of 6.7 times 10 to the minus fifth. Great. Now that we have this value for x, we can actually determine our equilibrium concentrations in terms of x. Since we just found the value of x is 6.7 times 10 to the minus fifth, that means in a saturated solution, the silver ion concentration will be twice what we just found, or 1.3 times 10 to the minus fourth molar. And the chromate ion concentration is 6.7 times 10 to the minus fifth molar. And that's what we need to do to solve these problems. They all fit into these two basic categories. Practice, practice, practice. That's really the best advice I have for you.